everyone today I'm going to be sharing with you uh, this card tutorial and uh, it's a really easy card to make it's fun to do you could probably even get the kids to do this one as long as you're a little bit careful uh, about where uh, they're doing it because it's a little bit messy but it's lots of fun and there's lots of sparkle involved and uh, I'm going to tell you about the different color combinations that you could think of using and different products that you might want to try if you haven't got the ones that I'm using today so first up, before we begin, I'm just going to talk to you about splattering, and that's the main technique used in this card. You need a long bristled brush, a nice soft brush like this one, and you're going to need some form of paint. I'm going to be using these pearlized paints, which I'll add water to, and you could use acrylic paints or metallic acrylic paints, and you could even use your inks to um, create splatter. I'm going to be working on black cardstock so I wanted to use the pearl paints and I'm also going to be tapping my brush against a pencil. You could try a finger but I warn you you could end up with a bruise as I did after the first session of making these cards. Uh, it works much better if you tap it against a hard object. The next thing I'm going to talk to you about is direction. So I'm going to be holding the brush in the direction that I'm traveling. That way I'm going to get a much narrower uh, amount of splatter than if I travel at right angles to the direction I'm splattering. So the first thing that you're going to do is load up your paintbrush with plenty of paint and I definitely would practice this so you get just get a bit of a feel for how much paint to put on your brush, how runny to have your paint, you want it quite liquid but you don't want it uh, so that it's just going to splodge onto your um, piece of work you want to hold your paintbrush in the direction you're traveling and you want to hold it quite loosely you can see i'm not hardly holding my paintbrush that means i'm not really tapping it very hard either i'm gently tapping to begin with and i'm holding my paintbrush in the direction that i'm going to travel and that way i'm going to create although it's going to splatter and you go you can't control it completely where it's going to splatter but you're going to create a frame so the first dots that come off your brush are going to be slightly bigger so I suggest that each time you load up your brush you start in a different position so that those dots can be um, distributed around the frame of your project and then as you get, I'm just taking a little bit of paint off my brush here, as you get less and less paint on your brush you'll get smaller splatters. So I'm just going to illustrate that here and they will be the splatters that you fill in with just to create a frame around your project. So obviously the more or the less paint you have on your brush, you'll find that you tap the um, paintbrush a little bit harder to get those little tiny splatters off your brush. So we've created quite a narrow amount of splatter and I just want to show you if you hold your brush the other way, the difference that will make. It might be that you want to do this on another project and create a wider uh, area of splatter but uh, for the project that we're going to be doing now we want to keep it narrow so we can create a frame. So now I'm going to hold it at 45 degrees to the edge of the card and you can see straight away that it's a much wider area of splatter. So we don't want to hold it in this direction, we always want to turn our paintbrush to follow the edge of the card. So we're working on black cardstock today but you can use other uh, colour cardstocks as the base and uh, you'll see that in some of the other examples that I'll show you. You'll also need some scrap paper. Uh, I'm going to cut or tear this one in half and you'll see how I use it later on. You need to make sure there's nothing around you that you can damage by getting any of the overspill of the splatter on. So we're working on the black card which measures 11 and a half inches by 8 inches and then scored and folded in half at five and three quarter inches. So if you're working in centimetres, that's 29 centimetres by 20.5 centimetres, scored at 14.5 centimetres. And you can see here that I've rested my card on a piece of paper and that's mainly to try and keep the back from getting dirty. So I suggest that you do the same before you begin splattering. You may also find that your um, card doesn't sit closed, in which case you need to either uh, put a little bit of tape on it or you need to hold it down with something that's heavy. And I'm trying to do it with a ruler, but as you can see, I'm gonna end up using masking tape. 
So if you're using masking tape, you just want to make sure, actually I'm using washi tape, not masking tape, but you want to make sure that you only uh, hold on to a little tiny piece of that card because obviously you don't want a mark um, around your frame masked by the tape that you're using. So I'm literally just catching the corners, just enough to hold it flat while we do the splattering technique. So for this card, I'm using this watercolour palette of pearl um, metallic colours and uh, I've had this a long long time I don't even know if you can still get hold of them but as you can see they last well and they're very very pearly the other thing that you have to remember with them is they're quite soft so you don't want to scrub at them uh, when you add the water to make your little puddles of paint you just want to be quite gentle and they soon mix into a nice uh, consistency ready to begin splattering so remember the more watery it is the bigger the um, actual drops of paint will be on your card so have a little practice uh, to get your technique right and uh, then remember to keep your brush in the direction that you're traveling and once you get the hang of where it's splattering you will get a little bit more confident and work quickly along the edges of your card please don't stress if you get little bits of splatter not going quite where you want them it doesn't matter it's just a case of trying to build up a frame on the front of the card it isn't even going to matter at all because we are going to cover this up with our main uh, portion or the main part of the design of this card at the moment we're just creating a little bit of background interest and we don't need to cover the whole card because we're going to cover most of that with our main um, section so I'm just creating a little bit of a frame around the edge of the card so I want to uh, mix and match a couple of colors so I'm starting off with this lovely bright orange and as I press the button for light speed uh, you can see the other colors that I'm going to be using so I'm adding some yellow and then I'm adding some of this very purpley blue so I'm using three colors mixing and matching three colors that I like and then adding some white so this would be a great um, background for a uh, space themed card for instance it looks very starry and galaxy like and I'm just drying it off and clearing up the uh, excess splatter before I move on to the inside of the card so again holding it down with the tape and masking the top section and this time I really am trying to create a frame because the inside of the card is obviously going to have the greeting and you need space to write on your card so I'm just going again with the same three colours, so the yellow, the orange and the blue and then coming back in with some white. And you can see I've definitely got a uh, section in the middle where it's much lighter. Now we're working on a piece of cardstock that measures six and a half inches by four and a quarter inches and that's roughly 6.5 centimetres by 10.5 centimetres and we're going to be creating another frame but this time a lot more ornate. So I'm going to use a stencil to create the first part of the sparkly frame and I'm using uh, this Tim Holtz dot fades stencil you could use any of the stencils you've got in your collection I suggest you pick one that's got quite a small um, pattern on it and the trick with stenciling is to make sure that the paint that you've got on your sponge I'm using a bit of old mattress here but you could use uh, dry foam I'm just picking up a little bit of paint and then on my scrap paper I'm making sure that I haven't got too much of it and then I'm lightly uh, swirling it over my stencil more paint that you have on your sponge the more likely you are to get a bit of a smudge going on so keeping things nice and dry uh, you're going to create a frame around your uh, piece of black card stock roughly about an inch in depth so I'm just lightly tapping it onto my paint making sure I don't pick up too much and that everything's nice and dry and then rubbing it over the stencil I'm not trying to be perfect here I'm being quite random and I'm just making sure that I create a frame all the way around the cardstock. You could perhaps use sequin waste if you wanted a similar look to the one that I've got here if you haven't got this stencil but definitely use a stencil that's got quite a small um, 
texture cut into it so that you get a nice delicate frame and uh, this dotty one is quite good in fact it looks quite retro I think when it's done and it blends in quite well with the rest of the technique okay so now it's time to splatter so remembering the top tips keep your paintbrush in the direction that you're traveling and create a series of orange dots and a series of yellow dots to add to your frame now I'm going to be using some of the blue paint and this time I'm going to be using this barbecue skewer to apply it and I'm just going to dip it into a little puddle of paint and then do some random uh, clusters of three dots it looks nice if some of them uh, look like they're hanging off the edge of the frame and some of them are peeking uh, into the inside of the frame so it's just a case of being random and creating a few of those little purpley blue dots on your frame you'll know when to stop just trust your instinct instincts and remember that we are going to add some other layers to this to build up this sparkly frame and then one more lot of splatter with the white dots I think the white just gives it a little bit of a lift and uh, I do quite like the effect of the white against all the brighter colors and then it's time to dry everything off and clean up all the little splatters and the next step is to add some little sequins they could be anything they could be round I happen to have these flower shaped ones the reason I'm sprinkling them on is just to see if I can get a little bit of a random pattern going on um, I'm not going to stick them all in the center of the frame but I'm just using them as my starting point I'm going to be using PVA glue to attach them and again I'm just creating little uh, areas of interest on this frame but this time using the little sequins and I'm mixing the green and the purple sequins together and you'll see I'm lifting them out of that centre section but it's just given me a little bit of a random start so you can do it this way or you can just add them one at a time uh, whichever you think suits you the most again it's not a case of completely covering the card it's just adding another layer of sparkle and interest next it's on with the stickles so I've got some orange stickles and I'm just creating little lines of five dots and some of them are going to be going vertically to the frame and some are going to go horizontally but again I'm just doing them randomly all the way around the frame I'm trying to keep the dots quite small and I am just creating a little bit of orange sparkle in the mix and you'll find that you you can see um, the areas that need the dots if you know what I mean you can just see the areas that could do with that little bit of extra um, interest and uh, obey those instincts and just add in your little tiny orange dots and then when you're happy with the amount that you've got on your card and you can see I am pushing them slightly into the center of the frame I'm going to pick another color of stickles this time it's a sort of very very dark uh, blue purple and I'm going to do the same thing again five little dots in uh, any gaps that I can find on this card so some of them are going vertically and some of them are going horizontally and you can see how we're building up that jeweled look be careful not to put your hand in your stickles as you're doing this now because obviously they're going to be wet where you're working and uh, you don't really want to smudge them at this point so I'm picking another color I'm going to go with this turquoise and I'm going to add just single dots this time so I'm going to make them a little bit bigger I'm going to start by adding a little dot in the center of the purple flowers and then I'm just going to add single dots first to the centers of the purple flowers and then just randomly around the card and I'm making the dots just slightly bigger this time next I'm coming in with some green stickles and adding the final little dots to the centers of the green flowers so set that to one side to dry and uh, then I'm going to show you how to put the card together so my 
glitter is all dry and my sparkly frame is all ready to put on my card. And I'm going to mount this uh, onto this lovely purpley uh, glitter card. And you could use anything. You could use mirror board. You could use just a plain card that's a contrast to the colours that you've used on your frame. But I'm going to sparkle all the way. If you're using glitter card, remember it's much better to attach the two pieces together using glue. Uh, if you use double-sided tape, uh, you can get away with it sometimes if it's really sticky and uh, the glittery card hasn't uh, got the tendency to shed. But to be on the safe side, I think it's better to use PVA glue. So my purple cardstock measured just slightly bigger than the original black piece of cardstock. So six and three quarters by four and a half inches, which is about 17 and a half centimetres by 11 and a half centimetres. So just make sure that they're two the two pieces are well bonded if you're using glitter card. And then we're going to attach the main panel to the front of the card using foam pads. And then once you've removed all those little pesky pieces off the back of your foam squares, you're going to put this centrally. Oh, oh, might not, might not put it straight, might put it crooked. Oh, no. <laughs> Whenever I do any of my projects, particularly scrapbooking, I always think, oh, I'm going to go crooked today, and, and they always invariably end up straight. But I am going to put my happy birthday on crooked, mainly because it looks better that way. And um, you could put your greeting on in lots of different ways. You could use letter stickers. I've used this happy birthday, which I've cut out with my Cricut from the same uh, cardstock as I used as the backing for my glittery frame. Uh, you could stamp and emboss a greeting and the greeting could be anything that you choose just for you. It could be um, good luck, it could be thank you, uh, it could be I think you're great, it could be anything. That's the versatility of this design. I hope to get that over to you today. You can use this uh, little tech set of techniques to make all sorts of cards. It really is fun to do. It's something you could get the children doing, I think. It really is easy. I'm trying to just get rid of little bits of glue that have squished out onto my cardstock. And uh, that is the front of the card. Almost finished. I just think it needs a couple of little bits of extra sparkle. And I'm going to be using some um, large and small purple gems. And one final little gem on the eye of the happy birthday. And that's the card front finished. And I'm just going to add a greeting to the centre of the card. Again, you could be stamping this greeting. I have cut out thinking of you in the same glitter card that I've used on the front of the card. And I'm just adding that to the centre of the frame with a little bit of PVA glue. So that's the end of the tutorial. One uh, very sparkly and very easy to make uh, card idea to share with you. And I'm just going to give you a little bit more inspiration by showing you a couple more examples that I came up with. So what about using this card design for another sparkly occasion? Uh, this is on a green card base and I've used uh, traditional red, green and gold with a little bit of white in my colour scheme. My sequins are little Christmas sequins of holly and uh, snowflakes but you can see that the design is more or less the same. Change the greeting, change the colour scheme and you've got a whole new card. And this one was supposed to be a little bit more masculine and uh, I hope that you think that I've achieved that. Uh, I've stuck on some letter stickers. I've used some uh, sort of screw top brads instead of the sequins. It still is a little bit sparkly, but I've kept my colour scheme a little bit more masculine. And uh, I did the lettering by hand. And this one turned out to be my favourite. It was one that I made last and I just knew that it would make a lovely frosty Christmas card. And I've used the white card as the background and the silver mirror as the accent. I've used some silver snowflakes as the sequins. I've got some little white stars that I've used also. And I've kept all the colours nice and light with a touch of blue. So I've got some silver little micro beads which I put on using uh, some glossy accents. I've used glossy accents straight just to uh, use and make little dots instead of the stickles. 
I've also used some of the iridescent stickles. I've kept everything light, so all the colours that I've picked are quite light and quite frosty. And uh, I hope you agree that it turned into a very nice uh, technique to use on a Christmas card. So I really hope you like this fun tutorial. It definitely is really easy to do and it doesn't really matter what uh, products you combine in order to achieve this look. You can go as sparkly as you like or you can turn it down a little bit. It really is entirely up to you. Again, it could be for any occasion and I definitely think I'll be making a few more of this lovely frosty Christmas design. But you could also add this uh, a little touch of pink into this and perhaps make it for a little girl's birthday or even a big girl's birthday because I'd be quite happy to receive a card that looks something like this. So that's it from me. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you are already subscribed, then don't forget to hit the like or to share this with your friends or perhaps leave me a comment below because I love to hear from you and I look forward to bringing you more projects soon. I am going to leave you with the note to say don't forget to stay tuned to the end where you can get the links to my blog for the cutting guide and to a few more of my video tutorials. Thank you for watching. It's me again, just thought I would give you a little bit of a tour of some of the things that you can find on my YouTube channel as well as giving you the all important links. So the, the link uh, that I'm about to post is the one that will take you to my blog so that you can check out and get hold of that um, cutting guide for the card that I've just shared with you. I'm also sharing the link to this card because it shows you a brilliant technique of a uh, photo transfer which is how I made this card and you can use that technique on lots of other projects. Um, you may not be aware but I'm also a great big fan of making tags and I play along with Tim Holtz's 12 tag series and I started in 2012. This is one of those tag videos from February 2013 and there's a whole uh, series of these tag videos so if you're someone that likes making tags you might want to click on this link. This project was something I created as a home decor piece, so I'm sharing the link to the home decor playlist. Uh, it's only a small playlist at the moment, but it builds up, and uh, I thought anyone that's interested in making things for their home might like to follow the link to this uh, little playlist where I make this gorgeous sampler using all my distress inks. I'm also a great big fan. You could tell that I flit about all over the crafting world and I love to make scrapbook pages. So I'm going to share the link to my scrapbook playlist where you'll be able to find out how I made this particular scrapbook page. So as well as sharing all these videos on my YouTube channel, you may or may not know that I also have an Etsy shop where I sell online workshops for projects like this one, uh, larger projects, projects for special occasions, and uh, this one is a celebration cake. I'll show you how to make this cake and you can decorate it in lots of different ways. This is the new baby version. It houses a mini album, so it makes a wonderful gift. And I step you through the process of making this cake and give you lots of ideas on how to use it so you could make a birthday version, a Christmas version and even a wedding cake three tier version. So I hope that you pop along and follow this link to my Etsy shop and see what else uh, is on offer over there so that I can show you how to make special projects like this. So two links here, one to my Etsy shop to check out what's on my uh, virtual shelves and the other one to the playlist for some of the projects that are available so that you can check out what they're all about and I'll give you some of the details of the projects that you'll be able to make with me should you decide to purchase one of my workshops. I look forward to crafting with you soon. Thank you for watching.